So I had someone reach out to me on Twitter the other day who had completed the cloud resume challenge. They were now going to different interviews and they were getting knocked back because they were being asked about things that they didn't necessarily cover in the original cloud resume challenge. Networking, VPC, subnet, virtualization and virtual machines. Now the original cloud resume challenge does focus a lot on the sort of serverless type of architecture. The big question though is how do you get to learn those if projects like the cloud resume challenge focus more on the serverless side of things? We came up with a alternative to the cloud resume challenge that focuses on sort of networking and classical architectures rather than serverless architectures as in the original cloud resume challenge. Now, the first step in this additional challenge is to start off with an EC2 image. You can choose an AMI existing image from the marketplace. So this first step itself should actually be very simple. AWS will actually deploy some default networking components into your account. That kind of robs you of a little bit of a learning opportunity. You can use those now, but what we will do later on in the challenge is actually then start to replace those networking components with ones that are custom built and actually set up your own network. In the first Cloud Resume challenge, we used S3. Now, this is another piece of AWS magic because S3 isn't actually a web server, it's just blob storage. But it has this very cool feature where you can turn it into a static site serving sort of website like a web server. In order to do that in EC2, though you actually need to install some sort of web server inside your EC2 image and then run that in order to serve different files. Now what I recommend is you can use something like Apache. What you can do is if you install that on your base image you can use that to serve your files like your index HTML which is going to actually show your resume. A thing that you want to get familiar here with is also the user data parameter passed into EC2 and that's a little script that will run when the machine starts up. Now that's a good place initially just to put in small scripts that are going to install packages inside of your image. There are actually more sophisticated ways of doing this but this can be a really simple way just to get off the ground quickly and get your image set up. Now what you want to do is actually transfer that into Terraform. And the two things that you'll need to get familiar here are Terraform Plan and Terraform Apply. Terraform Plan, basically when you run it, it will tell you what resources you're about to create in your cloud account. And then when you run Terraform Apply, it's actually gonna go ahead and make those changes. Now at step four is where we start to get into the sort of high availability side of things. It's quite crude to have an architecture where you just have a single machine, because if anything goes wrong with that machine, then your site's gonna go down. However, nowadays it's very simple to set up high availability. So what you will do then is take that that first instance you've created, do exactly the same and create a second. Then what you're gonna do is set up a load balancer to balance traffic between those two different instances. If you switch off one of your machines, you'll notice that the other machine should take over and all the traffic then should be routed. Okay, so at this point, you should have two instances that are running in the Amazon default created network. But as part of this challenge, the whole idea is to understand how networks work. So what you're going to do is delete those original default networks and actually shift your instances into some custom made ones. Now, this is going to mean that you're going to need to look into things like VPCs and subnets and IP addresses and all of that in order to get this network set up. This might take you a little bit just to wrap your head around, but this is going to be a huge advantage because it's something that wasn't necessarily covered in the original Cloud Resume Challenge either. One addition that I would suggest that would be really nice here is also to run this as multi-environment. Very typical or a simple way of doing this is to have some sort of development environment and a live environment. Then this can get more complicated. You might have a development environment and what's called a staging environment and then a production environment. Now in some regulated industries like finance, I've heard of all sorts of stories where they have things like 10 different environments. You write code and it goes to a development environment, then it gets quality assured, tested, performance tested, et cetera, et cetera, right the way up until it gets into production. One of the best practices is separate your environments into different AWS accounts. So you have production and live in one account, which is entirely separate from your development and test account as well. So at the same time of going into this multiple environment stuff, what you're going to do is also think about how you set up your GitHub project. Now it's very typical for you to have this type of setup where your main or your default branch on Git, when merged your code into that branch, it's going to deploy that code into production. Now you can get really fancy with this or what you can do is have one single developer environment that whenever a commit is pushed to a branch, it will overwrite that environment and then that could be then tested before moving to production. Now I remember there was a story a while back as well about a push notification being sent, which basically went out to everyone saying that there was going to be some sort of earthquake or natural disaster, which turned out to be fake and it was a false alarm, but they thought again that they were sending that out on a test system. Okay, so moving on to the next step, we're going to talk about relational databases. Now in the original Cloud Resume Challenge, we actually used DynamoDB, which is a type of non-relational database. Now what that means is that there is no structure within your database. You don't tell the database what tables or what data, how big or how small, what format the data should 
it being. So for this section, what you're going to do is deploy something like a Postgres database using Amazon RDS. It's because you're using SQL, you actually now need to create a schema ahead of time. This is different than it is with DynamoDB. So what you're gonna to need to do is set up what's called a database migration. Now you can do this as always in many different ways, but what I suggest is you go and grab a database migration tool and you execute that against your database. A simple way that you can integrate that is actually integrating directly in your EC2 instance. So in your init script that you set up, you can execute your migration script. Now, one way that you could take this further as well is also to integrate that my schema migration into your CI CD pipeline. Something that's different about this challenge versus the Cloud Resume challenge is also the management of secrets. Now that you've got a database in the equation, you'll need to figure out how you're going to store the password and distribute it to these different instances that you've got. Now, of course, AWS has a solution for this, which is called Parameter Store. In fact, they have a couple of different solutions and Parameter Store is just one of them. Now, what you want to do is now then configure Parameter Store so that it serves up your password to your instance in a secure way. Moving on from secrets, we get onto the monitoring part of this. It's a really big opportunity, I think, to make yourself stand out by not looking at just how the code is written, but also how it's operated over time. Because once something is deployed, then you've got years and years of support in that application running in production. Go and create a cloud Watch dashboard that pulls out some important and interesting metrics from your different bits of infrastructure. Having a good handle and understanding this incident process is something that's going to show that you have a level of maturity when you go to an interview. Because as you build out projects like the Cloud Resume Challenge, this operational maturity side of it, that's really going to set you out and apart from the different candidates that are also interviewing. Okay, and that concludes this run through of this sort of classical architecture for the Cloud Resume Challenge. I uh, Hopefully I'll get the pull request merged that I've raised onto the Cloud Resume Challenge so that this will be on the official website soon. However, if not, I'll leave a link in the description box to the full document with the draft in it if you want to have a go. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know and I'll see you in the next video.